Yes. What is going on guys? This is Grant, also known as Gashuski. I'm making another video today. I know, wow, crazy. Today I wanted to cover how to make a commitment video. This is kind of breaking down some of the footage that I just took for Rocco Spindler's commitment. Using that a little bit and giving you some tips and tricks on how to actually shoot it and how to edit it together. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right off the bat here, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that there's no wrong or right way to shoot a commitment video, but this is kind of like how I thought about it. So going back to, I think it was about a month ago, it was at the end of July that we started thinking about doing this video. Rocco kind of knew that he wanted to commit to Notre Dame. It was actually a crazy story because he told me that when he was a kid that he thought he wanted to go to Notre Dame and he told his grandpa that actually. So when he passed, it was a super emotional thing for him. I'm just really glad that I was able to team up with Irish Sports Daily and Rocco to, to make this video. And I think it came out really, really nice in the end. My first tip to you is to have some personal elements in the video. For example, Rocco, we had a FaceTime and we sat down and talked about what he likes to do outside of football. He lives in Michigan and he lives in like a part of Michigan where there's a lot of wild and openness. So we wanted to make sure to include that. We went to his cottage, I believe, that was pretty close to his house. We shot some fishing scenes, we shot a tractor scene, and we also shot him chopping up wood and everything. So these are kind of things that he would do on his off time and to include that into the video just added another layer just because this is a huge video and he's not just an athlete, he's also a person that likes to do stuff so I think it's really important just to include like these little tiny things and it just adds a lot to your video. So breaking down some of this behind the scenes, I shot all this handheld, I shot it on my Sony a7 III with a 55 millimeter 1.8 for most of it. I had my monitor, which is a um, a small HD 5 inch. That monitor actually broke, so I don't know if I'm recommending it at the moment, but uh, for this shoot, it was pretty good. For the mic, I just put one of my onboard mics on, the road mic. The final element I had was a Peter McKinnon 2-5 to five stop ND filter. That just allowed me to shoot at a low aperture with a pretty low shutter speed as well. And that's something that you can't really get if you don't have that because it's super bright all the time and we're out in the wild and there's just lots of sun so that's something that we did it was actually really funny because I really wanted to get some up close shots of him and the only way I could do that really is to hop on the side of the tractor with him so it wasn't really the most safe way of doing things but I was just kind of like hanging on the side and making sure that he was kind of in frame and um, I'll just get little elements of the, like the tires and stuff too and I think it came out really really nice even though I wasn't really seeing what I was filming but I thought it looked pretty good. Another tip that I have for you is to shoot handheld. Um, handheld just really gives it a authentic feel. I mean there's a time and place for every type of shot. You can have a gimbal or you can have a tripod shot but personally I love shooting handheld and I got like some walking shots next to him and tracking behind him and in front of him and I think it just adds a lot to the footage. Uh, it could be a little bit shaky sometimes, but that's where you hop into Final Cut and then you add a stabilization effect if it's too much, or you can just leave it as is. I usually put something on it at least a little bit just because it is usually like super shaky. But like I said, these, these tracking shots turned out really nice. I do remember that there was a shot where he was coming down the pathway and I was using the 70 to 200 2.8. But this was like one of my favorite shots of him walking uh, towards me or away from me and I just think those shots came out really nice. Something also to mention is try to make sure that the lighting for the day is not super harsh. Usually when I shoot, I usually try to shoot towards the end of the day. That's not always possible, but just try not to shoot at like 12 or one because the lighting's always super harsh and goes down and it just doesn't look very flattering. So thankfully when we shot this, we had it so that the lighting was pretty nice and it looked like golden hour. It wasn't exactly golden hour, but it looked really good in the end. Another tip that I have for you is to make sure you plan, 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 plan. Originally, I had many calls with Rocco and uh, Matt Freeman, who works at Irish Sports Daily. That guy's a goat. But basically, he made a document just kind of like highlighting the day and all the shots that might be included into it. That was super helpful for me just because I was traveling up to Michigan. Same with Matt. And I wanted to make sure as soon as we got there that we were good to go. Uh, make sure that we knew all the shots ahead of time. So we weren't kind of like thinking on the fly and trying to get all these shots. We just kind of had like like a, a main breakdown of the shots that we wanted even though not every single shot we might have gotten but we just wanted to have a good idea of the way that the video is gonna go my personal preference for shooting these types of videos is to shoot it in order if possible just because you want to make sure that you have all the shots when you're editing sometimes when I don't do it that way 
I kind of get back to the editing station and I realize, shoot, I didn't grab that shot or it doesn't really make sense in the order that I'm putting it in. So I think that's really important for you to do. Even if you can't shoot every single thing in order, just try to do as much as possible and then think about, just think ahead of time and make sure that you know that you're gonna get those shots if you didn't get them right then and there. Quick food time. Yeah, pretty hot. Let's keep I would also say that it's really important for you to have different locations because it'll make the video a lot more interesting. So I think we had a couple different locations here. We had his cottage, we had different locations on the cottage itself, and then we also had his high school, so we traveled to his school for that. We had him walk into the stadium, and it was actually a really nice stadium, so I wanted to make sure to have that, and also there's like this like Wolverine statue in front, um, so I wanted to make sure that that was included as well. So I think just making sure to pay attention to your surroundings, making sure that you're looking at every single location and trying to make sure that you have as many locations as possible is always important, I, I would say. We also had like a locker room within his school. So we had the field and then we had his locker room. We just wanted to make sure that it looked really cool in the locker room because he's gonna be suiting up and getting all the stuff on. And I'm not a huge lighting guy, so this was a good experience for me to get some really cool lighting. And, and I think it turned out really good in the end. Uh, basically what I did was I used one of my Aperture 120Ds and I had that as the main uh, light on the on the set. On the back I had a little light panel that I have. It's from newer, I think. And basically I just put like a gel on front of it. And it turned out really cool to have that in the background, especially on the logo in the back. If you check out the back, there's just this huge Wolverine for their mascot. And I think it looked really cool uh, with that illuminating behind him. The one thing with shooting in that locker room was it was kind of dark. So even with my lights, I would say that I messed up and I should have not shot in 120 frames a second. Maybe I should have shot in like 60 frames a second. When I had to crank up my shutter speed and also turn up my ISO, it was definitely like pretty noisy. I think by the end when it gets compressed and stuff by YouTube, it didn't look that bad. but. Like when I edit, I always like look at it and I'm like, dang, this looks awful. But like compression usually just gets rid of a lot of the noise and stuff. Speaking of frame rate, it kind of is up to you. If you want to get some slow motion shots, make sure to shoot in 60 frames a second or 120 if your camera has it, just because you're going to be able to slow it down in post. I usually shoot around one over 125 for my shutter speed, just because it looks a lot more action-y and it just looks a lot better. There's not a ton of motion blur, but there's just enough to make it look cinematic still. And I think that looks really clean. And in the end, I think when you have handheld shots with that look to it, it just looks really nice. On the field itself, we did a lot of different shots. The ones that we wanted to start with was him walking around the stadium and checking it out. Just thinking about all the times and memories that he's had there on that field. Next, I wanted to get some drone shots because the lighting was looking really nice and I didn't want to, I didn't really want to miss like the, the nice golden hour for that. So basically, Basically, I ran over and got the Mavic Pro. Um, it's a really nice drone, I love it. I think it's like $1,000, but it's definitely worth it. I was actually borrowing it, and I was able to figure out most of it with not that much prior drone experience. So I'd say if a buddy or something has a drone that you can use real quick, like even if it's not even like a Mavic Pro, like any any drone shot will add some production value to the, the shoot itself just because it's a different type of shot and it's establishing shot and it just makes it really cinematic. Although I would say it's not 100% necessary for a commitment video. Next we had him go through some drills. I think it's really important to have some like actual action shots in your commitment video because like who wants to watch a commitment video without any action? Actually seeing the athlete perform. So we had him go through some lineman drills. This is my first lineman video that I've ever done. If you think about it, lineman videos aren't the most attractive typically, but we made do with what we had and we made Rocco look really good. I mean, he did most of the work there, but he ran through all his drills. I usually tell them to do the drill like three times so I can get three different angles. I would say get as many shots as possible so you can switch it up get different camera angles and make it look different each time. I use the 55 1.8 for this particular part of the shoot. I like the 55 1.8 for these action shots just because it's zoomed in enough, but it's like not super zoomed in and you can still see what he's doing. On top of that, it's a 1.8, so it looks really cinematic and blurry in the background, which I really love. Quick shout out to my man, Matt Freeman, for our shooting this behind the scenes. Some of it is out of focus, but it doesn't matter because the man's a legend and I literally gave him the camera like right before the shoot to do all this. So once again, I appreciate you, Matt, for uh, taking the footage. Another shot that we really wanted to get was Rocco at the 50. He told me that he wanted this shot, uh, thinking about his grandpa, so he stood at the 50 just looking up in the air and I thought it came out really nice. It was a nice touching moment to see him thinking about his grandpa. We were on the field that he's made 
tons of plays on and it just it all came full circle so i'm really really happy that we got this shot and i think it came out really well we shot the rest of the video on campus at notre dame itself in the beginning we were kind of worried and we we're kind of like thinking about the rest of the video and how it's going to look after the high school we were just really worried because we thought it would not be interesting if it's just rocco on campus walking around so thankfully the gate was open we were able to get onto the field we were able to do a reveal shot of rocco going down the tunnel and then we had him coming out and just like looking around. It was actually funny because they had like a coronavirus thing set up on the field itself. So I had to like make sure not to get that and like get just the corner. And that was kind of tricky, but I think that shot came out really cool just because it's it's just tying everything together and showing that Rocco is 100% committed to Notre Dame and he's just checking out the amazing stadium that we have. I was super happy with how everything came out in the end. We were able to get Rocco's vision pretty much exactly how we wanted it. And I think that it was received really well by the Notre Dame community. So to finish off the video, I just wanna emphasize, sit down with the athlete and talk about their vision for the video. This is a super important video for them because they're making a huge commitment for the next four years of their life and they wanna make a good video to, to announce it. So this is your opportunity to go to them get their idea and bring it to life. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to comment down below. I will try my absolute best. I'm sorry guys, I suck at responding comments, but make sure to comment down below and I'll help you with any questions that you may have. I appreciate you guys and yeah, peace.